Duri Durian, a fruit so unpleasantly sweet. Written by B. J. Sow, illustrated by Katrin Fais. Somewhere in the tropics, there was a fruit town called Kampun Tropica. The fruits that lived there were bizarre. If you have had the chance to meet with them, you might even think they were strange. But each one of them was different in their very own distinctive way. Amongst the hustle and bustle of Kampung Tropica, there was a fruit so sweet and unique. He was called Duri Durian. As happy as he might be, no fruit wanted to be around him. Was it his smell? Or was it his appearance? Unfortunately, he could not tell. So he went on a quest, searching for a reason as to why the other fruits kept their distance. On the first day, Duri took a stroll along Tropica Street. There, he met Maggie Mangostine. He asked if she would like to join him and grab something to eat. She replied, "Oh." I'd like to, but I'm on my way to visit Uncle Stewart. He has a new pet, a bird. Also, she thought Duri smelled like old curd. But before Maggie left, she asked, "Have you thought of trying a new shampoo?" And walked away, covering her nose like a face mask. He took her advice, despite feeling sad. Duri bought a new shampoo. He went back home and ran a hot bath. He washed and scrubbed, making sure he did everything right, hoping he would smell good at least till tomorrow night. The next day, Duri went out again in anticipation that his effort would not be in vain. Along came Charlie Siku with a bag and a cane. He was heading to the doctor because of excruciating pain. Duri saw him from afar and wanted to give him a hand. Charlie declined, for he could not contain his breath with both hands. Have you tried drinking more water? It might help with the matter. Charlie added and thanked Duri for the generous offer. Again, feeling declined, he poured himself a big jug of water and had a lovely snack in his newly bought saucer. This is not so bad. I can get used to this. While he took a bite of his marshmallow sandwich. On the third day, Duri wanted to see a movie. While he was lining up to buy a ticket, he saw Rory Rambutan with a big cup of Slurpee. Duri asked if she would like to watch it with him. Just like he expected, she went, "Oh, I'm sorry." I just remembered I left my cap at the gym. Before leaving, she added, "I've heard a, a new perfume is out. You might want to check it out." Rory then zoomed off, leaving Dury feeling gloomed. After yesterday's incident, Dury felt blue. Playing hoops all day by himself, he saw Drago Dragon Fruit. Would you like to join me and play? Asked Duri, and to his surprise, Drago replied, "Okay." Perhaps the saying "all bad things come in threes" is true because this time the smell was not an issue. Duri had so much fun and never felt happier. They chatted, laughed, and played together, wishing that this day could last forever. Suddenly. They accidentally bumped into each other. Ouch! Drago got hurt from Duri's thorns. At the drop of a hat, he helped Drago to a bench and apologized for the cause. Then he reached inside his bag for some disinfectant and gauze. Now, Duri Dorian knows not only does he smell like a blend of cheese. Onions and old socks, but he could also hurt other fruits with his thorns. So he wrote down a list of solutions he thought could fix the situation. First, 
He tried using rolls of tissue. He carefully layered, not once, not twice, but three times around himself. It all went well until he made one move and his thorns went through. Then, while going through his closet to look for something he could use, he found an armor suit. It was so shiny and green, which he planned on dressing up for Halloween. This could be it, he thought. This suit will prevent anyone from getting pricked. Again, the idea was great until he started walking outside. The suit created loud noises and made the other fruit petrified. Clickety clack, cling clang. He ran as fast as he could with a ping and a pang. It was an embarrassing moment Deary would like to forget. He wished he was a tiny bit perfect. As he was catching the sunrise, thinking of his next step, something caught his eye. Beside a stack of burpap sacks stood a roll of bubble wrap. This is perfect! It's perfect! He said to himself. It's soft, quiet, and acts as a cushion for my thorns. So he wrapped himself with bubble wrap and went around three more laps. Deary felt incredibly pleased about his method and decided to try it immediately. In the beginning, he felt anxious about the other fruit's reaction. Then, Starly Starfruit walked by, made a compliment, and Deary felt confident. Suddenly, while he was standing in front of a coffee shop, something went pop! Oh no! Not again, he thought. Then came another pop, poppity, pop. Off he went as fast as he could and became the talk of the shop. Deary had tried everything. He wrapped himself with layers of bubble wrap, wore an armor suit, and even looked like an Egyptian mummy. He also drank lots of water, bought a new perfume, and tried a new shampoo. He does not know what else he could do. It's no use. No one will ever want to be friends with me, he said to himself while looking for his favorite candy to munch away his misery. Guess what? Luck was not in his favor that day, as he could not find any. So off he went to Chan Sempadak's confectionery. Just as Deary stepped out with a bag of marshmallows in his hand, he heard a loud cry. Ah! He saw Rosy Rose Apple on the ground and found himself covered with cupcakes all around. Rosie was on her way to Starly Starfruit's birthday party with a box of her famous homemade cupcakes. Unfortunately, she did not see what was in front of her and stumbled upon a thick metal plate. He ran up to her, asking, Are you alright? Are you hurt? I'm fine, thank you, but my cupcakes for Starly. She sadly replied and saw the ruined cupcakes stuck on Deary spikes. He helped her up and said, Not to worry, Rosie, we'll figure something out. Carefully, Deary removed the cupcakes from himself and made sure they did not drop. Then gently, he placed them back in the box. Amidst all that, he realized each cupcake center was hollow. He quickly had an idea to help Rosie by filling each one with a marshmallow. Without wasting any time, he worked on it at once. To Rosie's surprise, Deary did not only save the cupcakes, but they also looked nice. No amount of thank yous could show Deary how grateful she was, so she decided to invite him to Starly's birthday bash. Deary was ecstatic. He was never invited to parties. When Deary and Rosie arrived at the party, the other fruits felt afraid. They were not sure if they should run, hide, or stay. Rosie told them all about the incident and said, It doesn't matter what Deary looks like on the outside. He is generous, 
helpful, and kind who attended to a friend that needed a hand. From that day onwards, Deary found himself surrounded by friends he never thought he had. As the saying goes, he may have thorns, his scent may be unique, inside he is a fruit, so unpleasantly sweet. The end. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please subscribe and come back again.